One thing you might find helpful when uh, practicing for the part with your students is to create an online Google form that incorporates a lot of the things that they're going to run into on the So uh, part some test. of the things they're going to run into is being able to choose multiple choice, which only allows them to choose one answer to a question, or to be able to select from a box or a list, or uh, to be able to check multiple things at a time. So if we take a look at this form live, what students will be able to do is fill in their uh, information. I didn't even copy and paste this. This is something that students will find in the part test is that they can highlight text and they can move pieces of that text to another location. So you may want to tell them instead of copy and paste, you might want to say um, highlight the word practice in the sentence below and drag and it to so the box. you give that information and here and then you give them this and sample. then they can drag it to the box to practice. Um, something else is when you're in multiple choice, you can only make, when make one choice. List, most of the time you can only make one choice. However, when you're using a checkbox system, you can make multiple choices. So you can have students practice multiple different types of questions. You can make it kind of like a nonsense form, like I have here, or you can have it related to your uh, something that you're practicing right now in class and have them answer just four or five questions in a Google and submit form. the answers. You're going to get the answers, but you're not really so much concerned what their answers are in this particular scenario as whether they can follow those instructions to get those text So down. if you follow the link in order to take a look at my form, you can select to create your own. And if you have a Google account, you can sign in with your Google account. And when you sign in, you're going to get a form like this, and you can do a lot of cool things with it if you've never used Google before. I would name my form, and you don't have to give it a description. And what you're going to find here is that this one is a multiple choice question, and you can change that. But you want to give it a question title. Then I'm going to put in the season choices. Now, we're not setting this up to grade it. That's a whole other different scenario. You can use this for some kind of formative assessment. But we're just wanting them to be able to practice the multiple choice skills. So I can press If you notice here. here in the edit section, I can make this a required question so students would have to fill it out. And something else I can do is I can add an item. Maybe I want to collect student names so I know what or how they're doing. I can type name in, make sure that it's a text box, and press done. And I can reorder these questions as I create them. Now what you'll notice is in addition to text and paragraph text, which is just text but a bigger box, and multiple choice, you have the text boxes in the list that I showed you below. You can even have students select dates, for example, um, and have that date include the time if you choose and then press done. And when you're ready to use your form, you can view the live form. You can go in and have students fill out the form. And this particular form is not allowing me to submit it because I haven't put in a time And yet. so that's something else that students might run into is they think they've done everything correctly and it won't submit. They need to go back and look at the work. Now, if I go back and take a look at my form, I can allow students to edit their responses after submitting. And that is something that not after submitting, you want to be very clear with students. That once they submit with the, the online assessment, they can't go back and edit. But one of the things that students will find is that they can answer all the questions, they can flag questions, but they can go back and edit their responses. So this is a little bit different, but you can discuss this with your students depending on the age of the live form and fill in my information here where I can edit my response instead of submit another response. I have an extra option. And when I have that available to me, I can go back into one of that information oh. and resubmit my response. 
Now, once I leave this page, I'm not going to be able to go back and edit my response. But I can let my students know how there are features where you can go in and you can edit your information. So hopefully creating a simple little Some form is um, you find simple to do. One of the things that you'll want to do when you create a form is select the send form. I normally select the short URL and copy that, paste that link, and then I send can send the students via email, post it on my um, class website. And once again, if you don't know how to do those things, that's something to, um, to watch another video for.